A lot of people associate the word Bitcoin with owning a Lambo, weird looking charts and regrets for not having bought it in 2017. It's not all untrue, but let's not forget that Bitcoin first and foremost is a technology backed by an enormous amount of work and a matching number of innovations. Yes, you got it right. Bitcoin was never perfect and it required fine tuning. So today, we're gonna talk about one of those improvements, perhaps the most prominent in all of its history, the Taproot update. Historically, the first ever cryptocurrency with the highest market cap was in fact technologically imperfect. Another concern that the users had was the fact that Bitcoin's level of anonymity was lower than that of its analogs. The Taproot update became the solution to both of these problems. So now we're gonna speak about what sort of innovations it brought. Taproot is basically a technology that increases the flexibility of smart contracts and the confidentiality of transactions in the Bitcoin network. This scheme was first defined in 2018 by a Bitcoin core developer and Blockstream's former technical director, Gregory Maxwell. And it got the serial number BIT341. Most importantly, the Taproot update allowed for putting into practice a new script type called Pay to Taproot, or P2TR for short. What was the benefit, you might ask? The answer is that P2TR literally reduced the load on Bitcoin blockchain, which had a positive effect on traffic capacity and the cost of each individual transaction. These changes were achieved thanks to Pay to Taproot's ability to directly block coins instead of using a public key the way it used to be done before. If that sounds too complicated, in a nutshell, it freed up tons of space in the blockchain. It turns out that most Bitcoin's changes are connected with digital signatures, something similar to fingerprints that a user leaves by conducting a transaction. Before that, an elliptic curve digital signature algorithm, or ECDSA, was used. It generated a digital signature using a private key of a Bitcoin wallet and guaranteed that the assets could only be spent by its legitimate owner. But now the groundwork has been laid for Schnorr digital signature scheme that will allow for compiling several signatures into one, which in effect means freeing up some space on the blockchain and improving user privacy. The important thing is that such an approach to signatures is a game changer for smart contracts stored in the blockchain. And now, theoretically, Bitcoin smart contracts can be used for transactions of all sorts, from monthly rent payments to vehicle registration. And this, among other things, increases the overall utility. Some might say that it's not what matters most in Bitcoin, but at least now you realize the meaning of that update. Did you know that besides Taproot, the developers are looking to implement another update? That very Schnorr signature we mentioned earlier. And that update has already received a serial number, BIP340. Wanna know what it is? Of course you do. Let me explain. Schnorr Signature Scheme is essentially a system of digital signatures that grants higher user privacy and scalability of the Bitcoin network. And yes, it sounds a lot like Taproot. This concept was created by a German cryptographer Klaus Peter Schnorr in as far back as 1991. Here's an interesting fact that sounds a little bit like a conspiracy theory. Schnorr's patent for his signature system expired in 2008. And that's exactly when the unknown, but now famous Satoshi Nakamoto presented Bitcoin. Which means that by the time Bitcoin came along, Satoshi had already been able to use Schnorr signature scheme. But instead, he chose an entirely different algorithm, ECDSA. For those unaware, ECDSA is an algorithm that combines Schnorr and LGML signature schemes, which allows for bypassing patents. With all that in mind, one might suggest that the launch of Bitcoin had been planned long before 2009. But it's just a theory. One thing we know for sure. Had Schnorr signature been implemented earlier, it would have had much less impact on the network. Moreover, this type of signature is considered much safer and easier to use than ECDSA, not to mention that it's 10% lighter. Add Taproot to that which potentially expands the Schnorr signature functions and try to imagine how much more advanced the Bitcoin network would become. Since 2014, the developers have been continuously scrutinizing the possibility of replacing ECDSA with Schnorr system. 
At the same time, cryptographers point out that the two schemes could coexist within the Bitcoin network in parallel. However, as I'm recording this, the consensus on that matter hasn't been reached yet. But it has been reached regarding Taproot. On November 14, 2021, we saw the day when the update was incorporated into the network. It all happened at block 709632. Everything went smoothly and according to the plan. Immediately, Twitter burst out with posts about the first transactions following the upgrade. Now you know the story of the Taproot update. While being crucial to the network, it was pulled off without a single hitch. It was suggested, devised, and implemented. I came, I saw, I conquered. Just the thought of how easily and unanimously such a complex element was introduced causes admiration. Decentralization and unanimity were the name of the game. If this upgrade was a painting, its name would be Consensus. If you found this useful, don't forget to hit the like button, it really helps out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe even hit that notification bell to know when we put out another video. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.